it's Wes here from MotionRC.com and today we are checking out the Black Horse Corsair, having a little hangout with you and showing you some of the updates on the products we've been working on here in the shop to get ready for review. We have also want to kind of go over some things on the Eurofighter. I've got about 50 flights on it now. We've been going to a lot of events this month and I've been flying it back to back to back to back, really getting used to it and I think I can help you out by giving you some tips that I've learned from flying the Eurofighter with different batteries and different uh, CGs and the ordnance versus no ordnance. So we'll go over that a little bit later in the show, but for right now we're going to focus on the Black Horse Corsair. I've really been working on this one a lot. The uh, Corsair is coming out absolutely stunning. Uh, you can see the P47 in the background behind it. They're actually very similar sized models. I thought the Corsair was going to end up being a little bit smaller but actually when you get them up here on the tables and right beside each other, they're very similar. The jug's just a little bit bigger around, which gives it that presence. Uh, as always, Lori is watching the chat behind us, so if you have any questions for me as we're going through some of this stuff, just let me know. And uh, like I said, we're going to hang out today, answer as many questions about these models as we can, or anything else that's going on in the RC community. Uh, we are also going to be going to Wavy this weekend, so after the show tonight, we're going to finish loading up the trailer and we're heading down to that event at the Manatee County Radio Control Flyers. We've got some friends down there and we're going to go meet up with them. There you go, Lori's putting their uh, uh, flyer up on the screen for you, but we're going to be at that event this weekend. Uh, I think we're going to be leaving out Saturday. We've had three events in a row and... Uh, we're getting wore out, but we're going down there to hang out with the guys as much as we can and uh, fly some sweet airplanes. So I'm taking the P-47, uh, the Zero, and the Dornia down there. So if you're in the area and you want to come out and see those models or talk to me, come on out there and check it out. So let's go over some of the stuff. I've been working on the Corsair. Like I said, we're getting real close right now. I'm still waiting for the propeller to show up in the mail. Hopefully I'll have one in a week or so so that we can actually start flying this, but I'm going to be running a three-blade uh, propeller for it. I actually ordered it off of, I believe it's called Belly Props, Bailey Props, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's a uh, 20 by 12 three-bladed scale propeller for this airplane. Uh, I think Lori's going to actually pop it on the screen for you for a second. You know, we don't carry these at motion. That's okay. You know, we try and carry as much as we can, but we don't have this product. Uh, same thing on the P-47. I actually ended up getting that uh, from eBay on that propeller. So if you're curious of what I'm going to be running, uh, it's, it's made to be a 23 by 10 uh, to like a 20 by 3. Uh, and so being that it's going to be the three blade, I'm going to run this three bladed 20 by 12 propeller. And I think we should be able to hit about 5,000 RPM with it and it should pull this thing around no issue. So we got one of those ordered up. Hopefully it'll be here soon enough. So, speaking of uh, mounting, I'm gonna just turn this just for a second. It's been a while since I've been able to do an update on the Corsair. Let me turn this for just a second. Lori says we have a question. Motor size, gas, or blow. Ma motor size, gas, or blow. Good thing I'm turning this around here for us right now. So, this has got our Admiral 60cc gasoline engine on the front of it. Uh, so we are not going glow on this. Now, you can, if you would like to run glow on this airplane, you could. But uh, for our purposes, uh, I've been wanting to try one of our Admiral gas motors out. And no time like the present to try it. So we have the Admiral 60cc electric setup on the P-47 behind us. And this will be my first airplane with our Admiral 60cc gasoline engine. Now, I've also already tried our NGH motors. You can go check that out on our channel. Uh, we did the Nexa Hellcat with the NGH gasoline motor. That was the 9cc on that airplane, if you want to see that and see one of our motors in action. But yes, this is the 60cc uh, Admiral. Now, if you're getting this exact same airplane and going to set it up the way I am, go on and know that you're going to have to cut the bottom of the cowling out down here as far as if you need to get it. And I don't have my cowling screwed on, but just to show you, I think they can see in there right now, but I had to cut out for the head and the spark plug down there on the bottom. And Papa's actually been working on this a lot. He's the one that did this part of the airplane. Uh, 
but you can see that that had to get cut out, but it did hide in there really well. As you can see, I just got the cut right here for the air to go right over that head. And then we also vented it at the top here to just to let some more air in. But the whole bottom of this cowling's been cut out. There shouldn't be any issues with air cooling. And then this is the available pit style muffler from here at motionrc.com. We also sell this. Now, if you're gonna buy this airplane uh, or this engine, be aware, aware that it does not come with the muffler. So when you're ordering your 60cc Admiral, make sure you also order your muffler. And there, it's available right there on the, the parts list on motionrc.com. But yeah, go on and get you a muffler too if you're ordering this. And this is the pit style muffler from here at motionrc.com. And it fits right in there really well. Uh, I don't know that I can actually get the cowling all the way off right now. You gotta kinda take it all apart to get it off. But it, it I'm using the motor mounts that came in the kit. I did not have to modify this to get the motor to fit in here. This is the other thing I wanna stress to everybody. If you set up the same way that I have so far, the motor spacing is correct right out of the box for the gas motor setup. And this airplane comes with two different motor mounts right out of the box. There's one for if you're running a gas motor, and then it has a big wood support that bolts onto the front if you're gonna run an electric motor, and that's set up for the GP65 uh, over there. Now, Lori says we have another question, so let me see if I can answer that for you guys. Did you install lights? Uh, I did not put lights in this one. Uh, it does come with provisions to run lights out, and the wingtips are made to where you can put lights in them. And we have them on the P-47, but in this one, uh, I just left it alone, and I'm going to go on and just stick without lights. But you could easily add them to this model without an issue for the customer that wanted to know that. Um, what else? The airplane came with the gas tank, so we went on ahead and used the gas tank that it came with. It also came with the fuel dot. As you can see here, there's this little fuel dot on the side of the airplane. Uh, you can unplug that. I'm in a weird spot to grab it, but it's right here, and this is where you can fuel it from. Um, it also has a very large hatch on the top of the airplane for ease of getting inside of it. Now, it's still kind of ugly on the inside right now. I'm in the process of hooking everything up, and uh, until I know all of it's set up and working correctly, then I'll go in and redo all my wires like I always do. Um, but uh, I guess I can possibly here in just a second fire up the retract controller for you show you the wheels going up and down. Now, that kind of covers the front of the airplane. Let me spin it around for just a second the other direction. Large airplane, so it comes in very handy to have this table here. Uh, so if we look at it from the back, you can see, maybe, let me see here, if I can get it in such a way to where you can see the flaps. So the flaps work off of one servo on this airplane, and they are actually three-piece flaps, and they have these little white joiners in them right here that actually key them together. And you can see as they go up and down, it raises all three of them together, and then they come all three out like that right there. Uh, I don't have them hooked up at the moment. This was one of the last things I need to get set up and programmed were the flaps. I've got the elevators and everything working now, but... That's one of my last things to get done. Uh, Lori says we have another question. Uh, someone was asking, how do you assemble the guns? The guns. So I did my guns a little bit different, and this is for each and every one to do differently. Let me flip it back around here, and we can go over those guns real quick. So what I did for my guns, and Lori, I might need you to jump on the camera for just a second so we can get a zoom in on this. So on a real Corsair, the guns are just holes in the wing. I've actually been lucky enough to be around a few of these in real life. And so all I did is these three holes come pre-drilled in the covering underneath it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that on that dark blue or not. Um, you may have to just rack your exposure up a little bit. Give us just a second we're going to get into it. But there are actually three holes pre-drilled under the covering. And all I did was take my... Uh, sharp knife and cut them out. Now it does come with actual guns that you can put into the holes if you want, but I'm going to go on and just leave mine as these holes like this. And this is up to you as the customer. Like I said, it comes with guns you can slide in there and have them sticking out. But the real Corsair, the gun barrel is actually back in here and you can't even see it. And it makes a really loud whistle when it's going through the air and that's where the whistling death came from and then the supercharger noise. 
P51s actually do the same thing. They whistle really loud from the gun ports. But uh, anyway, what I did is just cut those out and leave those three holes open. But like I said, they do come with uh, plastic guns that you can slide in if you choose so. So if you want to zoom back out, Lori, and we will continue on. Uh, there's also some plastic details in here. I've, I've got to cut some of this out still. But uh, in here, on the leading edge of the wing, you've got the air scoops right here. These just cut out, key in, and slide in if you're wanting to use those, which I would recommend. Um, the gear doors, these were, uh, actually we'll go into the landing gear here in a minute. Let's keep walking around the airplane and go over some of the other stuff. We do have another question. Okay, another question real quick. What is the diameter of the cowling you have in your face? The diameter of the cowling. I can throw a, a tape measure on it real quick. If you can grab me one out of that drawer right there. Um, I actually measured it for a customer a little while back, but hey, that's what we're here for right now. Answer any questions you want. So, uh, diameter of the cowling is roughly nine and a quarter inches for that customer that's asking that. It's about nine and a quarter inches around. And I'm sure that's so you can figure out if you can stick a bigger motor in here or not. Uh, like I said, this is a 60cc. This is about as big as you want to go on here. Uh, not to say you couldn't get a three-cylinder in here, but your cylinder heads may be sticking out of the cowling. Um, and I guess for a depth, from the firewall back, you've got eight inches to the front of the cowling. And as you can see, if you look right here, Lori, come on up in here. Now this is, like I said, the largest motor that we recommend on the website. Uh, if you could look up here how I did mine, give these guys a look at it. So... This is my prop adapter right in here. So my prop is actually going to be off the firewall. Yay far. We'll see. Like that. That makes sense. It's going to be that far off the firewall like that. Uh, and that's just as far back in as I could push this motor and still have it where it will work. So cut that out and then your uh, prop shaft is right there. Hopefully that gives them a good look at that, though. Mm -hmm. All right. And then this is something I do differently. You can see all the rivets around the outside of it. These are actually screws. So uh, the way the manual tells you to build the front end of this is to glue your uh, radial in. Uh, and something we've always done a little bit different, me and my dad, when we put airplanes together, uh, and it carries over to here, too, is I screwed it in there. So if you ever break it and need to replace it, it's not glued in there. You can actually just unscrew it and take it out of there. Or say the airplane's not cooling very well with the, cat, the fake radial in there, you unscrew it and you can fly it with an open front cowling and then you'll never have an issue with cooling again. But it's always an easy way to try it. And then the little silver dots just make it look cool with all the little screws. And I've actually got the screw holes are all the way around here going to have silver headed rivets too. So yeah, we all caught up on questions for the moment. Currently. All right, cool. So uh, as far as your servo setups on this airplane, it's pretty simple. Uh, you're going to need eight channels at the minimum if you're going to run gas. Now, eight channels will not give you an automatic choke, so you can set up with a servo-driven choke. There is provision inside the airplane to do it. I am not doing it, so I can run that one less channel, and I just put my choke on a lever inside so I can just reach in here, pull it on choke, flip it a few times till it kicks, and then push my choke back off. Uh, but you could always do it on a servo. Like I said, there are mounts already made inside the airplane to run a choke servo. So you need one channel just for your throttle if you're gonna be gas. Uh, you need, the, and here's, here's how you can split it up a little bit differently. So I'm gonna run each aileron in their own channel. So there's three. Each elevator half is a channel, six. Rudder, seven, gear, uh, eight. Did I miss one? Flaps, is that nine? Okay, so you can Y harness your ailerons to get into eight and then Y harness your flaps to get into eight. Or you can run a nine channel if you wanna separate the two. There we go, my mind. It gets to be too many channels to think about all in my head, but yes. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it though, I'm gonna have a Futaba 10 channel in here and I'm gonna be able to run one channel for every single uh, surface. So anyway, that's how I'm doing that. Now, 
The other cool thing on all the black horse models that I've done recently on these larger ones, uh, they come with what's called the little black horse retrap control unit. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift this up and show them right now because it's kind of all plugged in. I haven't actually hard mounted it yet though. Can you show them this right here? Let's see if I can Let me see if we can get some zoom in going. So each one of these black horse models comes with this. This is the black horse retract control unit. And what you do is you plug each one of your retracts into the bottom here, and then you can power it with its own 2S LiPo right here. So this separates out your retracts from the airplane, and then all you need is, you don't actually need the ground and the uh, uh, neutral on this, you just need the signal wire, but uh, you plug in a uh, servo extension, and that gives you uh, a way to go out to hit the uh, uh, retract channel. Uh, but the other cool thing is you don't need to have the power system on in order to operate the retracts, which is actually very handy when you're taking these big airplanes apart at the field. So the cool thing is, let's see if maybe they can see it. Are the wheels right there where you can see them? Yeah. So tail wheel retracts and both mains retracts. So here we go. And there we go, they're armed, and go. These are twist and turn retracts. Tail wheels up. And did those wheels go up? Yep, there we go. And back down. Hopefully I don't hit the stand anywhere. Okay. And there you go. That's the retracts going up and down. And maybe I can uh, position the airplane a little bit differently here in a second so you can actually see them. But they are working very well. Uh, hey, Lori, can you hand me that little bottle up there under the TV that's got the yellow cap? One thing I want to talk about on these retracts. So I've had three of these black horse planes across our bench here. And uh, something I do, this isn't something we sell here at Motion, but... Uh, on eBay, I use this. It's, it's actually for slot cars, but it's, it's a, just a lubricant. We're looking for an oil. Uh, you don't need nothing crazy. Uh, some three-in-one, something that you can get in there with. And, and I like this just because this has got this little... See the little cap? It's real easy to just point, pinpoint where you want it because it doesn't take a lot of this. But on a retract, you have your worm gear that goes in and out. And I like to put a drop of this oil on that worm gear. These were really tight coming out of the box and they kind of stuttered like this coming in and out. And I put a couple drops of that on that worm gear and man, it smoothed them right out. And then same thing on the twisting me mechanism for this airplane. I went on ahead and there's, there's the bar that comes out and it's hard to kind of tell you about it right here without getting in close, but there's a bar that comes in and actually pushes that retract sideways to make it twist and swivel up into the airplane. I put a couple drops of oil in that and it really smoothed these out. So if you're doing one of these black horse planes, what I would recommend, the tail wheel and the mains for this one, the P47, uh, the, the FW190, and the, uh, um, what's the other one? Corsair? Have I mentioned it? Anyway, all four of the giant scale, oh, and then the P40, Warhawk. Uh, they're all going to use these same retract units. The first thing I would tell you to do when you get it out of the box is go on and take that retract and drip a little bit of oil right there on that servo. Uh, not the servo itself, but the, the gear drive. You'll see it when I'm talking about. It looks like a long bolt. Uh, just put a couple drops of oil on that. You don't need to go crazy. Don't get it super wet or nothing, but just give it a little bit of lubrication, and that really helps that go in and out. Uh, I've, I've put many, many, many flights on the P-47 and the Zero now, and I'm still on the very first set of factory gear and have not had one instant where they didn't come down. So they've been really bulletproof for me, but I do maintain them. Uh, the biggest thing I can also tell you on the retracts for these Black Horse models, take your time putting them in. If they bind at all, they have a safety mechanism that stops them. And I can probably do it, actually if I grab it. See, I can cut it off by holding it. 
let the other one go up the rest of the way here. So I held that one and I'm showing you right now. These have a safety mechanism in them. If they're any kind of bind, they're going to stop. The good news is, all you have to do, if they were coming down and they got stuck or something, flip them once really fast and they'll come back down. So you'll see it'll actually extend now and lock. There you go, we're down and locked and my other two are coming out. So that's a safety mechanism to keep you from burning your retract up though. So if this retract is coming up and gets in any kind of a bind, it's going to stop. So definitely take care to make sure when you're installing them, take your time and make sure that retract doesn't bind. And that's why I'm saying lubricate them. Take care of them. Make sure there's not a bunch of junk when you're installing them and cutting, getting into that retract. Uh, it'll really mess them up. So uh, like I said, they've been pretty flawless for me. Now that I did that oiling and a little bit of maintenance to them. And that's something that you just got to look at when you get into these larger scale models. You're going to have to kind of maintain them and take care of them. If you fly it out of the grass a lot, it's going to throw a bunch of crap up into that servo. Let's retract and you need to make sure that's clean so that it doesn't get messed up. Uh, I guess let me flip it around and maybe we can show them the tail wheel. Uh, it's got the same tail wheel mechanism that's in the P47. Now the one bad part is when I put it together, I didn't get my door aligned exactly right. So y'all can go on and get mad and fire me right now. I didn't get this exactly right. Let's see here. Grab my retract controller. Dude, I'm a, there, can you see that good? All right, can you see that good? All right, I'm gonna put the gear up and down. Let me make sure I'm not gonna hit them when they go up. Now you can see this tail wheel. Alright, and then I'll put it back down. There you go. And that gets you that. Okay, so suspension travel is what they're wanting to see. Now, here's your tailwheel actually has suspension on it. So there's your suspension travel on the tailwheel. Quite a bit of travel, actually. And then for the front gear, like I said, kind of heavy to move this around real quick. It's easier to just roll the table than it is to pick up the airplane, though. All right, I'm going to unplug the retract controller. I think we're kind of done with that for now. And maybe uh, later for you guys that want to see the retracts more up close, what I'll probably do is flip the airplane over and get some up close shots and put them on Instagram of the wheels actually going up and down. So you can see them up close. It's kind of hard right now and where we are, but uh, you've got, I can actually tell you how much suspension travel you have. You have right at about one inch of suspension travel on the mains. Now these are hard to push because remember this plane weighs close to 20 pounds so actually it could even be close to 30 now with the gas and everything in there. I'm going to get a final weight at the end of this. I'll put it on my scale and get an exact weight but she's, she's pretty heavy and it's big. I mean let me see if I can figure out where to pick this up. It's hard to tell you how big it is until you actually see it. I can't even figure out how to pick it up right now. Can you help? I think I got it. Alright here we go. Can you zoom out so they can actually see how big this is? Or are you zoomed all the way up? I mean, guys, this thing is massive. Let's see here. Ooh, 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 bonk it into everything. Can you see how big this Corsair is now? It's huge. So, ooh, ooh bonk, 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 bonk. Out working with this one today <laughs> but super excited about it uh, another part on this airplane that I did have to kind of trim just to tell you there's these cutouts right here on the front of the retract 
And what this is, is it's a hole because as it comes up, the twist and turn mechanism is right there. Um, I had to shave these just a little bit. This is where I was getting a lot of hanging up. So when I first put the gear down, they were stopping about halfway. Turned out they were hitting right there. And so this might be something that you're going to run into, but I just had to shave that just ever so slightly to get those to go up and down just right. Uh, one thing that's a little different on the Corsair from the P47 and the Zero that I ran into is these are those twists and turns, like I said. So um, there's a lot more going on on the way up as far as the little rod pushing the retract and turning it. So you just got to be very careful to make sure you don't got any binding going on anywhere. They've been working good ever since I got that done. Uh, the weathering that's on the airplane is just how it comes right out of the box. Uh, the only difference, like I said, uh, is I didn't glue this on. Uh, the instructions wanted you to glue this on. Something I always do is they're just screwed in here. I don't know if you can get in there close real quick, Lori. I know you just walked away again, but this is something I do on all of mine. So uh, if you look around at some of the other ones, instead of gluing these on, as you can see, it just looks like rivets, but these are small screws. And I just counter drill them in and screw them on. That way, if my pilot ever comes loose, I want to get in there and add some detail, whatever, uh, I can just unscrew my canopy, get in there and fix whatever's wrong. Whereas if you glue it on there, you're kind of stuck. It's hard to get it off if you epoxy that on there. So this is definitely something I recommend that's a little different from the instructions, is just get you some small screws, drill that in there and put that in. So uh, if there's no other questions on the Corsair, I think we'll move over to the Eurofighter. Like I said, I'm getting very, very close on this. Uh, my onboard ignition's mounted, uh, receiver's in here. I'm just currently hooking everything up. So I'm hoping to be maybe flying this in the next week or the week after. Uh, it should be pretty soon that we're actually out flying this airplane. Um, like I said, we're real close. Uh, this one did come with, just to show you, Got it sitting right here. Uh, this is the Black Horse CG set. Uh, this comes with a, all the Black Horse models I've seen so far. Uh, you actually clip this in. You slide the wings on around it. It's got a string you pick it up from. And it'll tell you, I don't know if you can see that, but this has got the CG marks right on it and this is a handle. So you, you can lean over the airplane, pick it up with this, and it'll tell you if you're on your CG or not using your CG marks. And this is all explained in your manual if you get one of these. But uh, all the black horses I've seen so far have been like this. Yes, ma'am? What screws did you use on the canopy? Were they wood screws? Yeah, they're a little, uh, I'll show you. Hang on, I got them off of Amazon, actually. I don't believe we carry anything like this here. Um, but uh, Amazon's got these little screw sets. It comes with like 10,000 little screws. Uh, and if you look those up, they're just little tiny wood screws. They're uh, uh, M 1.7 by 6 millimeters. There you go. Are the ones that I used to put my cowling on. And I actually use them to do the uh, motor cowling also. But I buy these little sets of screws off of Amazon. They're real cheap. I think it's like 5 bucks for this big box of them. Uh, maybe I can add them after the video something. I don't know. How that works but uh, I'm sure if you want them message me motion RC Facebook Instagram wherever you want I'm always willing to talk to you guys like I've said in the past if you message us at motion RC on Facebook Instagram YouTube wherever you're gonna get a hold of me uh, or James and uh, we'll definitely be happy to answer questions about these models and how they're built and what we can do to help you guys be successful with yours at the end of the day that's what I want I want you to be successful with your model if you're getting them from here at Motion RC. So I'm always willing to talk to any of our customers here at Motion. So let me slide this guy out of the way real quick and we'll bring the Eurofighter back in. If we have any questions on this again in a little while, I will gladly answer them. Let's slide that over and bring in our Eurofighter. So, ta -da, ta da yeah, that's right, lay some dance music there. Ta-da! The Eurofighter. So like I said, I've got about 50 flights on this airplane now. Uh, really been enjoying it. I know we're getting close to these finally going out to our customers. Uh, and I am super excited to see what guys are going to do when they start customizing them. I can't wait to see a lot of guys get a hold of this one and fly it because this is such a fun airplane to fly. 
Uh, if you've been keeping up with any of the Motion Lives, uh, last weekend we were out at Airfest to land, and uh, I probably put mm, 10 flights on it right in a row that day, and we were just having a ball with it. And as you get used to the airplane, uh, it's very capable, let's put it that way. I mean, you can stand it up on the nose at full power and just kind of hover it, and then it'll just, I mean, it's just a lot of fun. Now, some of the stuff that I've changed on it, so uh, I've actually run it on both uh, radio systems now, both Spectrum and Futaba. I've flown them on both just because I like to try a little bit different stuff, and so I can answer you guys a little bit better. Uh, now, I know and I originally went over this last time, uh, we had it on the Spectrum system, so now I'll go over it on how I have it set up on my Futaba. So on Spectrum, I like to put my reverse thrust on the bind button. On Futaba, you have a momentary switch up in the corner. That's where I also put my thrust reverser on here. Uh, let me plug it in real quick. Here down, latch down, and go on and show you around here. Might as well have it plugged in while we're here on the table. Oh, we've got to turn the radio on. There we go. So I still have, uh, my rates are set up at 100, uh, 80, oops, wrong one, this is elevator, 80, and then 65 for my three position switch of my elevator. And then for ailerons, I have 100, 80%, and 65. And I really like that mid rate on this, unless I'm in my slow flight, which I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to doing some high alpha with this. In high alpha, I really like 100% rates with about 15 to 20% expo. When it's standing up on the nose, you really want that extra rate to really get this airplane to move around for you. Uh, it's a bigger, heavier model. It handles high alpha fantastic, but you're definitely going to want that added rate whenever you're flying it slow. Now, as far as high alpha goes, I have flown this now on a 4,000 milliamp with no ordinance, and it does high alpha fantastic. It'll actually punch out completely vertical on a 4,000 with no ordinance on it. It's, it. There is a video floating around of it. It's in one of the ones that we've done. I'm not sure if it's out. We've done so much Eurofighter content here lately, but I come by and I actually punch out and go straight up with it. It'll do it for quite a ways up until it kind of falls out of it finally. But, I mean, you get a ton of performance. So what I did with the 4,000, I'm setting it at about two and a half minutes of useful throttle. So anytime I'm over 10%, it's counting down. And I'm usually getting right at about three minutes when I'm landing with a 4,000. Now, the sweet spot for this airplane is honestly the 5,000. I've been flying it the most on our 5,000 50C packs. Uh, I probably put most of the flights on this one. Uh, and what I really like is with the heavier battery, flying it with full ordnance. Um, so it really moves your CG back about half an inch whenever you put the ordnance on the airplane. Out of the box, as it comes, you can fly it just like it is. You don't got to add weight or nothing um, because the battery only really goes in one spot. So there's not a lot of shifting the battery in this airplane. Uh, but with the 5,000 in there, and all the ordnance on, it really does some beautiful high alpha. And I know Lori's keying up some videos. We've got plenty of them out there right now. If you're wanting to see it, the uh, one we put out this week of the full ordnance flight really shows the high alpha capability of the airplane with the ordnance on it. Now that being said, the model is being shipped with a lead weight. So if you want to run no ordnance and get that CG back, to where you'll be able to really do those really great high alpha maneuvers, you can actually glue that weight in, in the aft section of the airplane, and that will get your CG permanently moved back with your heavy battery. Now, what I do recommend all of you do is fly the airplane as it comes out of the box for your maiden. If you're gonna be flying it on a 5,000, there's CG marks on the wing, it's gonna be nose heavy. With a 5,000 milliamp battery, it's gonna be nose heavy but the airplane flies extremely stable, it penetrates wind really well, and it lands extremely smooth with that extra nose weight. So I definitely recommend for your first flight, no ordnance, 5,000 milliamp, and like I said, it's only gonna fit in one spot in here because the 5,000 really fills it up. 
Uh, you can get a six in here, but I really feel like the five is the sweet spot. Go on and fly your first flight like that. Get a couple flights. Feel the airplane out. Don't focus as much on the high alpha. Do everything else you want to do with it, and it does it superbly at that CG. But when you're ready to start doing your high alpha maneuvers, throw your ordnance on. Go out with your 5,000 and just fly it like that. And you will notice instantly that the airplane's going to want to fly around with the nose up as soon as you put the ordnance on. It's okay. It's going to like it. It's very locked in and very stable without the ordnance. Now, I have not flown the airplane with a gyro. I've flown both times I've, or both receiver setups and radio systems that I've had in the airplane have been without a gyro. I haven't felt I needed it personally, though. I, I don't run a gyro in a lot of stuff. Uh, I do it just sometimes for fun. <laughs> if you hear something in the car pulling up outside. Uh, what I do, though, is uh, I fly without the gyro just so I can really feel the air flight. Uh, but there's no uh, quorum if you want to use it. It sets up just like a normal airplane. There are no mixes. All you do is plug straight from the receiver board into or the, uh, the onboard board right into your receiver just like a normal uh, six channel airplane uh, and, and it sets up just like that. Now if you want to run a gyro, like I said, their mixes will already be done right through the board. You just run a gyro like normal if you want to run a Hobby Eagle or however else you want to do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at on the Eurofighter. Like I said, I've got about 50 flights. It's been holding up great, still on the same retracks. You've seen us do it out of the grass now. We've got several grass flights. Uh, retracks have been holding up great for the grass flights. Um, like I said, any questions on the airplane right now? Not so far. Not so far. Everybody's good. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things still, and, and it's, it's funny when people see this in person, is these cheater ducks on the top. Uh, when you throttle up the airplane, they actually open and close on their own. Can you zoom in right here? Yeah. I know this is going to be loud, everybody, so headphone warning. Giving everybody the headphone warning. Uh, but we're going to look right in here. This is really cool to me, and, and it actually does it. So if I just hold the airplane and give it some throttle. Ooh, I'm about to blow everything off the wall over there. <laughs> you can see those actually open and close. Uh, quick little rundown of the features again. The air brake right here uh, opens and closes. I've got that set up. And if you want to know how I set up my radio, I put my air brake right, right up here on this corner. I've got my landing gear right here. I'm not going to flip them because I don't want it to fall over. Uh, and then, like I said, reverse thrust is on my momentary switch. That way, if I accidentally ever hit it in flight, it automatically always turns itself off. But I can turn on the throttle, and if I hit that switch, it automatically goes into reverse. If I let go, it automatically switches back. Uh, and then rates on both ends. But yeah, that's how I set up mine. Uh, I've been going with a three-minute useful throttle timer on the 5000. Like I said, this is where I've been flying it pretty much non-stop. I've tried it with all the other batteries just to try it. This has been really the sweet spot is the 5000 though. Uh, I've been setting to three minutes of useful throttle and pretty much I can rip the whole time, fly as hard as I want. If I land at that three minute of useful throttle, I haven't had him come down any lower than 3A to sell. I mean, it's been storage voltage when I come down. This new 90 millimeter fan is very efficient. It's very powerful. Uh, we do actually have a video of it through the radar trap. I don't know if it's queued up to where we can watch it right now. Okay, we're going to probably put that out at some point this week. I was going to put that on Facebook or maybe here on YouTube, but uh, Florida E-Jets, I actually put this through a radar trap. Now, <coughs> it wasn't straight and level. I was diving it through the radar trap, just so everybody knows, but I was getting 147 miles an hour is what I actually ended up getting it through the radar jet, uh, radar trap at Florida E-Jets. And that is a certified radar gun. It's not like we're using a cheap one that's not right. Uh, and I'm not trying to tell you they're going to go that fast level. You're probably at like 110, 120 level flight full throttle. But if you're diving it, which most guys do when they're trying to go fast and look cool, you can get about 147 miles an hour out of this. I'm at sea level. That was on the Admiral 50C black pack, just like this one, nothing crazy. 
a great reliable battery and we were having a blast with it so yeah that's what's going on with it right now uh, i know these are getting close to going into customers hands i'm super excited for these guys to get these things and start flying them uh, i wanted to come on here today for anybody that has questions about the Eurofighter before it actually starts shipping um, I know I've seen a few of them out in the wild now. Uh, it's pretty awesome. But guys, I think that's it. If there's no other questions for today, I just wanted to pop in and give you a little bit of a shop update. What's going on? Like I said, <coughs> if you're in Florida right now, I will be at Wafee. Uh, Lori put that on the screen a little bit earlier. Uh, if you want to come out and see it, I'll have the, uh, Black Horse P47. I did change mine, as you can see. I added my own custom nose art, so I have the Nexa P47 uh, Razorback, and I did the wolf on the front of that one also, and it was Wolfie number one. And so I had some fun with this one, and I pretended like he got shot down, and then he got the bubble top. So this one's Wolfie number two. Oh, we have another question. They want to see the retracks. They want to see the retracks on this airplane? Yep. <coughs> sure. Let's see. Let's see. Can you zoom in on them or anything? I know I've put these up and down for everybody several times, but uh, they're pretty filthy right now too. I need to actually clean the nose retract. It's full of gunk. Turn it this way. Uh, you can see my wheels are no longer have the tire tread on them. We've been flying this thing a ton lately, uh, but here you go. We'll do them once for you. So you'll see that the uh, lights will go off when I flip the switch. And then all your gear doors will close. Like I said, I've not been gentle on it. We've been flying it out of the grass. Uh, it's been to all kinds of shows lately. And uh, it's been really good. Ta-da! And then they'll close back up. And there is a switch inside of the airplane for when you're taking the wings on and off that will let you open the gear doors uh, and leave them open while you take the wings on and off. Uh, and someone wants to see the, Oops. Oops. Bump, the underside of the Corsair. Whew, that one's going to be a little more difficult. I will try and let you see the bottom of the Corsair real quick, but it is very heavy and awkward to pick it up in here right now. But yes, give me just a second. All right, so I think we got all the Eurofighter questions answered for the day. Let me slide this over out of the way and we'll bring the Corsair back in real quick. Actually, Lori, what I might do is try and just pick it up and stand it up on the nose out here without the table. Okay. Try. Whew. I think I like to drop it right here. Let me see if I can just stand gonna fall off it's not screwed on but there is the bottom I'll hold it like this if you want to kind of give them a, a walk around now the cowling's not screwed on right now I just had it set in there because I'm still working on it and I have not put these guys go in here and I haven't put these in yet there you go if you want to let them take a look around this is exactly how it comes right out of the box. I have not weathered this airplane any further. <coughs> Excuse me. Throat dried out. This is exactly how it comes right out of the box, though, with all the weathering pre-applied for you. Um, I will say one of the more challenging parts of the build assembly is these pins right here, if you can get in here. These are Robart-style hinges. If anybody's ever used those in the past, they glue in using two-part epoxy. I used 30-minute epoxy, and uh, as you can see, there they are opening and closing. Uh, you just got to get them all lined up perfectly, though, when you do it. It's nothing hard, but it is time-consuming and a little bit more detailed. And then if you can see out here on the wingtip, it also comes with these little covers to cover your servo horns. So it's all internal up to your aileron. So this is all you see for your aileron uh, attachment. As you can actually see, if you look at the bottom of the wing, it's actually very clean. All your servos and servo linkages are internal on this airplane. 
aside from that little piece right there. So the bottom actually looks very clean on the wing. You do have these inspection hatches here to put your servos in, but like I said, it's very clean on the bottom of the airplane. And then I guess while it's flipped up real quick, can you zoom in there and let them get a real good look at the retract too? <laughs> there you go. Now you can really see those big beefy retracts. There's the actual motor. And uh, for the guys that I was telling about earlier, there's a worm drive right in there that actually is what runs this up and down. And that's what I squirted a little bit of this oil right in there. That, if you can see that right in there on that worm drive here and that really helps smooth them out and somebody was asking about the travel on them earlier there's actually your travel right there that's how much travel the airplane has for the suspension so that's the piece that slides up and down on the spring and that shows that this is all metal too these are twist and turn so as they go up they turn and go into this hole so yeah there you go all right uh. I'm going to try and pick this back up and put it on the table now. It's not very easy though. Urgh. That's how big it is though. <laughs> I got it. So, watch out. Slide that back over there. And guys, that's probably going to wrap it up today. I'm going to have Lori double check just to make sure there's no other questions. Um, I'm trying to do this a little bit more often with you as much as I can, uh, these from the shop updates. Uh, I know James currently has the Nexa uh, Twin Otter. Uh, he has it built on floats. If you're interested in seeing that airplane, he did post up a post this morning uh, over on the Motion RC Facebook community page and the Motion RC Facebook page. So if you're interested in his build that's going on right now, he definitely is keeping up with that over on social media right now. So go check that out. It's looking like a beautiful airplane. I'm excited to see that one. Uh, I need to get back out. The uh, Nexa Touch of Texas is actually back in stock also right now. So if you're interested in that airplane, I may go live maybe next week with that. I have the same airplane and uh, actually built it back before I worked here. It's my own personal airplane and I've loved that model. Um, so maybe we can talk about that one in the future. Uh, I also recently did the Nexa 208 Grand Caravan uh, Cessna. Unfortunately, I built it, went and flew it, and then it went out of stock. So I haven't uh, done much promotion on it until we get them back in stock. But I've had several of the Nexa airplanes right now, and I've really been enjoying that. It's been really fun doing all this balsa stuff here lately. Don't get me wrong, I love the Eurofighter, and I love foam. Uh, but I also really enjoy getting to build a big balsa airplane. There's something about it that's just, uh, it's the pinnacle of RC. When you, when you move up from the foam stuff to the uh, balsa stuff, it's, it's kind of the pinnacle of RC. Uh, you can't get them this big, and that's kind of the fun of it. So I love them all. Uh, you'll never hear me bashing any of it. I love them all. Uh, I think we should all get along and enjoy our models together and have a good time. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, if you want to see these big gigantic airplanes, I will be down uh, just uh, south of Tampa this weekend at Wavy. Uh, it is the, here you go, pop it up there. If you're in the area, uh, you can come out and fly with me. Uh, I'm just going to be hanging out. I'm only bringing three airplanes because when I bring the black horses, they take up so much room in the trailer. So P-47, Zero, and the uh, Dornia, I'm going to have all three of those down there. I'm going to be hanging out with everybody. Uh, enjoying the weekend with all the guys out there. Like I said, it's been a real busy week here at Motion, or busy month here at Motion RC. We've been to three events this month, uh, and I've been enjoying meeting so many of you uh, as we've been going. Uh, for events upcoming, I'm entering this or that in Top Gun this year. Uh, so if you want to come compete with me, I will be at Top Gun. I've already done my entry fees. I'm in the EDF class and uh, sportsman. So come out, fly at Top Gun with us. Uh, and I've also gone on ahead and I registered for EDF Jet Jam in Indiana. I've always wanted to go to that uh, event. Or I don't know if it's just called EDF Jet Jam. I think it's called just Jet Jam. Excuse me. Uh, 
so I am going to that also this year. I know there were still some registration spots left for Jet Jam, uh, but not very many. They capped that one at 100 pilots, and uh, from what I understand, it gets there really fast. So we're going to be up there this year having fun with everybody. Uh, I look forward to meeting a lot of my northern people that I've been talking to online for a long time that go to that event, because that's all the way up in Indiana uh, at Rosewood RC Park, I think is what it's called. And like I said, I've been seeing it for years, always wanted to go to that event. I'm super excited to get to make it this year. Uh, so for all of you up in the north that have wanted to meet me before, I'm going to be up there this year. So if you come to Jet Jam, I'll see you there. Well, Lori, I think uh, we're going to call this a day. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with everybody. And uh, we're going to see you guys in the next episode here at Motion RC. <laughs> Bye.